Hello and welcome to Locator Gaming, I'm Zach, and today I'm continuing on with my Aeon Trespass Odyssey campaign. Another busy week, and it's the weekend, so I get to play some games, and I'm ready to dive back into this. So, we had a timeline battle against the uh, level 1 Labyrinthoros last time. So we are still on day 7. This is going to be video number 3 of day seven because during the exploration phase we got ambushed and then we had to do the timeline battle so we just finished the encounter step and we'll be going on to the advancement step but first i have to do my uh locator's corrections segment at the beginning of the video uh maybe corrections and some clarifications uh so the first one that was discussed in the comments was about knockdown cards and conditions and stuff. I had trapped one of my characters. Basically, he just I I was on the standing up side of the knockdown card and I got knocked down again. And uh, I don't know what maybe it was something from Kingdom Death that was in my brain, um, but I felt like I would just get knocked down to the falling down side. Um, that's not the case in this game. If you already have a condition card, you can't get the condition again. So, so they already had the knockdown card. I couldn't get the knockdown card again, so I shouldn't have been doing that. Also, one of my characters got mazed touch. Uh, Telebacchus here got mazed touched during the fight. On Labby's card, Labyrinthoros card, uh, if you're mazed touched, you're supposed to suffer from all fate. Things like if it'll say on a AI card or a BP card or something like uh, if your fate's three or more, if your fate's seven or more, do this extra thing. Uh, if your maze touched fighting him, he has a thing called maze sense. I think it was. You're supposed to suffer from all of them, no matter what your fate is. Uh, and I don't think it caused uh, too big of a problem though with the fight. Another thing that I had thought um, was with the doom card. On the first side, you were supposed to get a Doom if you got Maze Touched while that was up, but uh, this particular side, uh, side 1B, doesn't say that, so I'm not going to add an extra Doom. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to add an extra Doom, so I won't need to worry about that. Uh, there was uh, at least one time, I think, I exhausted my Javelin even though I missed, or uh, sorry, I didn't wound. And the javelin says you only uh, exhaust it if you end up wounding. Um, so that's a little note. And then I had also made a comment about the escalation boxes. I was interpreting the escalation boxes on this sheet incorrectly. I thought those es the, the big escalation box here would block you from fighting earlier levels, but that's not the case. Um, you're always supposed to check off the uh, leftmost box uh, and what I wasn't thinking about and that someone on the discord uh, helped me understand and let me just give credit where credit is due his name was mighty owl 95 on the uh, discord um, is that basically what this box is here for is you get to ch it's a choice for you it's like when you come to this box do you want to fight a level one hecaton or do you want to fight a level one labby and I'm I'm shortening the name uh, I don't know if that's the official nickname for that primordial, but I guess on this channel it will be. <laughs> so I think I misspoke on that. Um, I do just want to reread this Doom card. So this is the one where these uh, Labyrinthian temples go out. Uh, those have to get treated as Doom symbols. And we cannot use the negotiation here at this city when, with that temple on there. I don't know what this means, so this would be an interesting question. Uh, does the Is the Doom symbol doubled up then? Because this tile already has a Doom symbol and this gets treated as a Doom symbol. So does that mean if I go there it's two? It just means I'm never going to go there again. Right? And this is the thing that made us shuffle, shuffle the heck of trap into the exploration deck and we don't like that uh, and you need six or more despair tokens or 
Doom tokens. So when I was setting this back up, I had not noticed this before, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but at the bottom down here, it's very subtle, but it's like Doom times six. It's a reminder there. When six of those get put there, it's time to flip it over. And it's the same thing on here with the progress. It's the progress symbol and it says times six, kind of grayed out a little bit. I mean, maybe these cards are supposed to be side by side, but it's fitting better on my table going like this. So we've got three progress. Uh, I think that's everything for setup. So now we go to the advancement step. So we're going to craft gear, uh, get new technologies and stuff like that. So our timeline for day seven has a structural advancement on it. And I think I'm going to get rhetoric. I thought about this before. Um, here's my deck battle stuff on top. I think I'm going to get rhetoric because rhetoric can lead to titan hunting. You need rhetoric to get titan hunting, which can help us potentially get more titans when we find titan symbols. But there was another one that it also... Oh, this anti-indoctrination philosophy one. Uh, when, when you have priests, it can help you get rid of maze-touched affliction. I thought I had a priest, but I guess I don't. I could not see... I thought you got one during the tutorial. Uh, but I guess not. I could have swore I had one. Maybe it was somebody else's playthrough I was watching that they got a priest or something. So I'm going to get rhetoric. Um... I think the only thing that's not already in the deck, it requires Last Academy, but we have that already. That's one of the big ones, I, I'm almost positive. That's a, the, one of the gripes I have with this, is I wish this thing had this, these big cards had the same name on both sides. Yeah, because it's Last Academy on this side, uh, but it's Lost Tome on that side. Yeah, Last Academy is the one that lets you do these uh, upgrades. Okay, we're uh, so rhetoric. Oh, let's read the flavor text. The Labyrinthinians talk about nothingness with devout passion. We need a message of our own. Let all who doubt their purpose despair not, for this ship is in itself a message. We are here for a reason. Persuasion is a save check. Gain one Argo Fate when you're about to gain a stranger to test diplomacy, seven plus. On a success, we can lower that stranger gain by one to a minimum of zero. Also, at cities, we can do a negotiation thing. Gain one Argo Fate to lose a stranger. Oh, that's what I was doing. I was looking for... I think the only one is Minoan Investigations that we don't have in there yet. Yep. What does that do? You may re-roll your Adventure Hub's table roll once. Okay. So this goes in our projects deck, I think it's called, and this is our completed stuff deck. Maybe it was dumb to take the river thing, like if I didn't have any plans to go on the river right now, but I was worried that I might need to go on a river and when would I have the chance to get it again? because I could have Titan hunting by now already. Okay, so, so now the question is, do I want to craft now or do I want to wait? The adversary did get too closer. That's right, I forgot that I said I was gonna move the adversary. Yeah, we'll go here. The adversary was here. It moved too closer because of those gear cards that I got that had the, uh, adversary movement thing on them. So we had to get a little bit closer. Um, so I, I have seven days, seven turns before the next timeline battle. But I, uh, I could get jumped by our little uh, moth-winged friend here. In the meantime, um, but I think I want to wait until I can build 
the card that gets me the support equipment, and then maybe another thing. Because uh, our timeline has a couple of battle gear things coming up before the next timeline battle. So I'm going to hold off on crafting. Um, there's no story events on the timeline. We do not have any unresolved Nemos breakthroughs. We've barely been on one adventure, I think. We've been on one adventure, and uh, we've done two R&R adventures. Uh, Doom events, no, and then end. So we're just going to start the next day. And I, th I guess I'm just going to stick with the coast. I don't know if I should be exploring out in the water, but... And I don't know how much of that thing on the... Uh, I think it was the story card. So we don't, we don't have very many supplies, so stick to the coast. I don't know if that was supposed to be a hint or if I read too much into it. Um, but we're going to continue along the coast. So we've got 52 to go down there. And wonderful. It's got a doom symbol on it. Okay, last time there was nothing else of consequence. There was a secret code on the card that I missed. And, uh, I'm looking, I don't see any numbers on here. Unless these like glyphs. It is kind of cool. It looks like the maze is like expanding up onto the hill. So, yeah, so I don't really see anything secret there like there was on the other card. Uh, again, unless there is a glyph or something. And we do have one thing that tells us about a glyph. This thing. So is there anything on here that looks like that? Not really. There was one other thing that was brought up now that I'm looking at this deck. Something about this trade fleet dock. And I don't have... There's actually still an ongoing discussion on the Discord about the interpretation of this line. So unless we get to a city and want to do some trading, uh, it might not make a difference for this particular video. All right, let's mark off the timeline. And there is a battle gear upgrade on this day. So this day is probably going to be pretty uneventful. Um, Advance the timeline, exploration, trigger exploration symbols, then resolve an exploration draw. So exploration symbols, got to put a doom. So that's two out of six. And then let's get our exploration deck. Uh, and I did, sh I did put everything back in here because we had a timeline battle. So the stuff that was taken out is back in here. So let's resolve stack number one. Trireme Wreck is gain two Trireme Resources. Oh, and it has the Adversary Movement symbol on it. So now this is something to pay attention to on the uh, So this is brand new, I'm just going to double check. Brand new for me anyway. Page 16. Let's see. Once the adversary has been introduced, whenever you encounter the adversary activation on the exploration card, if it's already present, move it. One tile towards the Argo. But then, and then if it's on the same. Okay, so here we go. I guess moving along the coast helps us to maybe stay away from that guy. 
a little longer. And that ends the stack. So we'll go to the second stack is gain a monument. Oh, that's two cards. Sorry. Oh, no. I wish it was that bottom card. Okay, this is uh, ridiculous. If our Argo fate was eight plus, resolve an additional thing, but this is two. Oh, and we get to keep drawing. So two, uh, one, two, hello. Now we keep drawing and this is a gain one monument resource. We are not friendly with anybody, so we're not gonna gain two. Man, I really wish I could get some armament. Are there any armament things in here? Yeah, there's two, one, one man i need armaments guys armaments to make armor so we got a monument and two triremes i mean i guess we could trade if it comes up man we've got 12 trireme resources right now and six monuments And the adversary is one tile away. Uh, but this does have remove until the next timeline battle. So we will set that to the side. So it's not going to double move on us again. And these go back into the deck for the next turn. But what is uh, a little scary is that on the next exploration phase, I could potentially draw a couple more symbols. We will at least be another tile away. All right. Uh, so that was exploration phase. We are not on a thing with R&R &R or adventure symbol. Uh, there's no timeline battle. Advancement. So now here we're going to take our timeline. Has, we're going to take basic support equipment. The Triskelion Junction is more malleable than we first thought. We may be able to tinker with the Antikratos Helms to spur specific reactions. Uh, so this gives access to support equipment and I th I think we can have one I know you can attach there are some things that can get attached to other equipment uh, what does this lead to it leads to pursuer sighting uh, labyrinthoros sighting and specialized uh, there's labyrinthoros sighting Pursuer sighting and what? Specialized trireme weapon. So there we go. Hmm. Those have some pretty heavy requirements. Okay, so like I said, that opens up some more stuff for us to craft. Uh, but I want to get more resources before I start committing gear or start committing resources to gear. Uh, story, there's nothing on the timeline. Yeah, I think that's just the end of the day. Uh, pretty boring day. So we'll move. We'll keep going on the coast. 53 is the next one. I think the next time I play this, either I'm going to go the other direction or I'm going to go like out away from the island and just see what's out in the ocean. 
53. Okay, at least here we get a progress. Oh, there's a river. And there's a seat, there's a little banner. See, I saw that, I saw that on this tile as well. And I wonder if they're, if those little banners are like at the beginning of the rivers. It's like an asterisk three, asterisk eight. So it's almost a four code thing, but then where do I get the other codes? Maybe it's in some stories or something. But there's a river, there's a progress thing, uh, but not a whole lot else. Oops. Okay, trigger exploration symbols. We're gonna put a progress. I'm gonna put it on the story because I wanna to try to advance the story. We're at four. And maybe I'll put some on the Inward Odyssey thing after I advance the story. Because we're already on the second side of the Doom card and we're still working on the very beginning of the story, uh, story main story card. Okay, exploration. Space still. Adversary, stay where you are. Let's get some armament resources, please. First stack. Yes, gain one arm. Ugh. This is a high and a low. <laughs> okay. And that ends the stack. Oh, I shouldn't have shuffled that. Crap. Oh well. Sorry. Uh, and a monument. So we got an armament and a monument. I was too, too busy staring at that adversary. And you know what? I forgot to check off that we were moving. There's nothing on day nine timeline here. Uh, but we get one armament and a monument, so we're at seven. So that adversary does make me a little nervous. Spring harness is four armament. What about other armor? The Siren armor is two monuments, two armaments, and three raw ambrosia, ambrosia. So I need another armament, or I need to trade. I don't have an ancient shell. Uh, and for shipwrecker shield, two armament. Yeah, I just need armament to make armor. I mean, like I said before, it's, it's got armor in the name. So that's our exploration phase. Yeah, we did the progress. There's no adventure tile. I didn't see a secret number or anything to look at. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to craft anything. Saving up. This is the stuff that I have that I can craft. No story events, no doom, so I guess we just go to the next day. Now, what's the coast? Is it up or is it through? I guess we'll just keep going this way. 54. Tile 54, where are you? Okay, there's no doom. Hey, there's a Titan symbol and an adventure symbol. This one has the big footprints by the Titan symbol again. Okay. So we got a Titan symbol and an adventure symbol, finally. Pretty sure the Titan symbol is uh, during, Let's see, during the exploration step. Jared was unexplored tile, yeah. 
Now, where's the one that talks about exploration step? Yep. Okay. So we got to mark the timeline. Day 10. This has a structural advancement on it. And then tomorrow, day 11, has a battle uh, gear advancement on it. OK, so no exploration tokens as far as progress or doom, but we get the Titan. We don't have to roll or anything, right? It's just get a Titan. Titan Stoa. If you're Argos unexplored map tile with that gain plus one Titan, it must be the, uh, I think Titan hunting is the one where you can roll to get an additional one. Okay, so that's gonna take us to six. Six is better than five. Alert the press. Uh, and then we got to do our scary moment. Two stacks of exploration cards. Uh, I'm going to keep shuffling, but I need to check that one armament card if it was supposed to be removed. I don't think so. No, it's just these big ones. Oh man, it was the one on top before I started looking through, and it does not have to get removed. When do you put new temples out? Place it on the temple. Hmm. Maybe that'll be important later in the story to go to the labyrinth temple. Okay, stack number one. Labyrinthian Vessel. Resolve an effect based on your diplomacy with the Labyrinthians. Uh, we are unfriendly. Gain one Argo Fate. If we had seven or more Argo Fate, random Argonaut gains a despair token, and then this is going to get removed. But we will continue drawing. So let's gain an Argo Fate. Takes us to a grand total of one. And the next one. Oh no. It's two monument resources and the adversary movement. Stops the stack. <laughs> why why are you <laughs> why are you doing this to me? The next stack? Uh two trireme. So two more monument and two trireme. That makes 14 trireme, 9 monument, and still only one armament. And this one is out. Why wasn't that the trading vessel? I guess our chances of getting the trading vessel are increased now. We have an adventure symbol. So we've done exploration. Now we are on to expedition. So we have to consult the adventure table. Right? We don't just keep going on the same adventure. Or something in the back of my mind that's like, wait, if you have something already, adventure phase, page 25. It's been so long since I've had an adventure. Oh, wait, it's not adventure phase. You know what? You guys don't need to sit here and watch me flip through the book. I'm going to throw in a cut. I need to get something to drink also. So I'm going to throw in a cut, double check this, and then we'll continue on. Be right back. Okay, yeah, you just roll. I think I was thinking about something with the Nemos things. Uh, like you're supposed to, f if the word matches, you're supposed to fill the one with the most in it already or something like that. So we go to the storybook. The 
front of the storybook. Um, so it's here in the front of the storybook, but I also have the a pretty helpful thing from Board Game Geek printed out that has the table on the top and the faded boxes, so you can mark these faded boxes instead of marking in your book. So I'm still on story card one, so I will roll. And so far the only thing we've done is the alpha of faded conundrum, I think. Yeah. So let's see what we get. We got a four, which is plight of the people. So we're gonna have to do the alpha of plight of the people. And then we get to check our Nemos cards also. So finally get some advancement on those things, hopefully. Page 38 is plate of the people. And yes, we're on the alpha. So this one says heritage. So let's do that first. Uh, Minoan Heritage has heritage. So we get to fill in a box or a little Nemos thing on the heritage thing. All right, so Alpha, you come upon a remote fishing village. Fortunate for you, you've been running low on supplies. You send a small party of scout ahead. No reason to make the locals anxious. As you make sure, you begin to notice the eerie absence of sounds, smells, and movement. No one comes to greet you. There are no signs of struggle or bloodshed. It is as if everyone just got up and left. There is something in the village green, though. Someone has arranged stones and fishing equipment in a strange pattern on the ground, like a whirlpool or an octopus, but with straight lines, almost unnaturally precise. A sense of abandonment permeates the village. There is history written in the buildings, crude but sturdy once, withered by time and periodically renovated, but each time made a little lesser for it, as if decay overtook progress or despair overtook hope. Choose. No one is left to claim the supplies, and with your growing crew you need all the resources you can get. You order your crew members to take the supplies and leave. Local faction diplomacy minus one, which is uh, Minoans. And we are currently... So that would keep us at... That would take us from plus one to zero, still in the neutral area. Or, this place has been cursed by the truth you've been hearing about. Maybe you should keep Hope the people of this village will be back someday. And more pragmatically speaking, if the cult has been at work here, they may have left some clues as to their current whereabouts. You leave the supplies and look for clues. So we would gain an Argo fate, and we would go to 26. I want to try to get my diplomacy up. So I'm not going to take the supplies. So we're gaining an Argo fate, so that takes us to 2. We're not really like pressed right now for Argo fate. And when I say stuff out loud like that, bad things usually happen. So we need to go to 26. Each Argonaut uh, tests Cunning 8 plus. Gain plus one danger and or plus one fate to add plus one each. Hmm. Okay, zero through one success. Oh, so this is how many Argonauts are going to get are going to uh, be successful. If we only get one or fewer successes, this is weird. It says fail. Oh, if the if that Argonaut fails, I guess it's going to gain a danger. If we get two successes, we could gain a progress. If we get four successes, four more successes? How do you get four or more successes? Hmm. That's weird. So I could gain a danger and or a fate to add plus one each. Cunning eight. Who has good cunning? Danger or fate to add plus one. 
and we're trying to get at least two successes. But who has good cunning? Uh, we have cunning one on Penelope here. All of our dials are at zero. Can you only get plus one or can you like really go for it? This is and or. So gain one danger and or one fate to add plus one each. So I think you could add two. I'm going to go for it. Everybody's going to add two. So we're going to get a fate and a danger. We're going against a level one, probably Hecaton next. Maybe I'm playing with fire, but... Actually, you know what? Maybe I should just do these one at a time and see if I really want to press at that point. So let's start with our person who gets a plus one. No, maybe we should end with that person. Okay, Otis zero, you're gonna get plus two. So getting plus two to this. Otis zero also has once per adventure once per adventure, you may re-roll any d10 roll. Hey, look at that. Okay, seven plus two is nine. So the way I'm interpreting it, this is one success. Uh, Cersei guard. We'll take one and one. That's a six plus two. Yeah, let me zoom in so you guys can see this. That's a six plus two is an eight. Okay, so that's two successes. We're going to gain at least a progress. Uh, we could note something in the boon section on the Argonaut sheet. Four successes is an Argo knowledge. Is that worth it? The failing, you gain a danger anyway. Oh no, you gain a fate. You gain a fate if you fail. I mean, I could gain a fate to re-roll uh, adventure dice. Um, using fate, you can reroll attack rolls, evasion rolls, and tests. And this is a test. The, the only downside is that you could, if you fail, you know, like if you uh, screw up both, you could be sitting there with um, two fate. So what's what's better? Is it is is it better to add a plus one with fate and danger? We're gonna have Penelope go next. She's gonna take a fate and get a danger. She has plus one from her cunning ability. Okay, six plus three is nine, so that's three successes. Now we're really gonna go for it with Telebacchus, trying to get these four successes. Four plus two is six. So I think I can take a fate to re-roll this. And it's a six plus two is eight. Four successes, sweet. Uh, we got some stuff on our dials to get that though. But uh, we're gonna get an Argo knowledge out of this. Four plus successes. On the beach, beneath an overturned boat, you find wet pink sand. After several hours of digging, you uncover the body of a horned guard, mingled like it's been through the grinders of a mill. So much for the supposedly peaceful message of the Labyrinthians. Gain a progress token. So that's five progress tokens. And gain an Argo knowledge. 
So gaining Argo knowledge, if you gain Argo knowledge during a step, uh, when you reach a given Argo level during the story step, I swear there was something in the FAQ or something that you do the Argo knowledge thing uh, if you gain it outside of the two progress, like during that phase. There are so many rules to remember. Um, you know, I want to try to get this right for the video, so I'm going to throw in another real quick cut and check the FAQ. I'll be right back. Yes, it's in the FAQ, very specifically. It says, when you gain Argo knowledge, you go on an inward odyssey adventure at the end of your current step. The exception to that is if you get it from two progress tokens, you do it during the story step. Um, and it has a rule book site in there. So, we're going to go to Argo knowledge level three. And we will have to remember to do that. So I don't forget, I'm going to move it right here, front and center. Uh, but we were not done with this passage. Regardless of your choice and outcome, Labyrinthians Diplomacy minus one. Uh, so still in the unfriendly, that takes them to minus two. And then the least likely Argonaut gains the someone waiting Nemos card. And if you have the Min No One Guide, also see 009. Okay, so we need to get the least likely Argonaut, the, God, it's been half of a second and I can't remember the name. Someone waiting. And of course, it's the very last one. Someone waiting. Voyage family gods. You can exhaust it to stand up. You can use this ability while knocked down. That's awesome. Ooh, another Titan may stand up. Um, cunning and endurance. Let's get this in a highly protective sleeve. Then we have to figure out our least likely Argonaut. So. Otis Zero here has two, so that's not him. Our other three all have one. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so four, it's going to be Telebacchus. It's going to get someone waiting. Wow, well, he's got three endurance now. And one cunning. I will write it on his card after. He's the one who's also maze touched, unfortunately. But he is the one that I have been using to tank. So standing up is kind of fitting. All right. <laughs> Back to the book. Lots of stuff to do on this adventure. We do have the Minoan Guide. Uh, if you think back to way like episode three or four or something, now we have to read 009. These fishermen served my father, says the Minoan princess. It does not seem they prospered under his rule. It's been hard on them the last few years. War with Theseus, the fall of heaven. Minos had a need and they acquiesced to the rising demands of the state. One of the Argonauts looks to the empty village and says, It seems someone made them a better offer. The princess looks at them with scorn. Gain plus one progress. If you want to press the issue, the party leader... Oh, I was supposed to pick a party leader. Well, I'm going to have to go random now because I just saw uh, that. Two, so Otis Zero is our party leader. Uh, 
what number? We were on nine. So we're gonna gain a progress, which is uh, number six. So this thing says, uh, when there are six or more progress tokens on this card, flip the card to side 1B. So does that happen during this step? I guess? Let's finish this. If you want to press the issue, the party leader gains two danger, then C0019. Seems someone made them a better offer. The princess looks at them with scorn. Uh, do I want Oda's zero? That would be three danger. I don't think I'm going to do it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do it. Yeah. Well, I might actually make that thing where I can lower danger. No, I'm going to do it because I, I'm probably going to craft the thing, the Argo ability where I can lower danger. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I don't have a whole lot of Titans. Oh, well, we're going to do it. Three danger for Otis Zero. At least he's not the guy I have been using as a tank. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to stay. Okay. Zero one nine. Is there something wrong, Princess? She looks directly at you. As a matter of fact, yes, there is. You think I approve of Manos's harsh methods? That I agree with my sisters on everything? I'd have gladly renounced my station if it would have made any difference for the people here, but it wouldn't. Have you stood up to Minos and your sisters then? Uh, Akakilis looks as if she wants to say something, but then slowly lowers her head. Make an uh, Akakilis, Akakilis, I don't know how to say this name. The Minoan Guide, make a Minoan Guide tally mark. Return to the adventure. Okay, so we do have to, tr we are tracking, so that's tally mark number three. Okay, so now the question is, is it the story step where that thing happens? Uh, the story progression has been triggered. I think is in the story step. Again, this is the first time this is happening. I'm sorry I've been looking at the rule book so much, but I'm trying to get it right for the video, and this is the first time this has happened. Uh, Story progression triggers when there are a certain number of progress tokens on the current story card, and other common requirements being on a certain map tile. Most of the time, resolving story progression involves flipping it to the other side. So I think that's during the story step, story progression. So we don't do this card yet, but at the end of our adventure step, are we at the end of our adventure step? Um, we did the adventure table, we got the Nemos modes, that was the alpha story, so there's no faded boxes. Okay, encounter, oh wait, wait. before we go on to the step we got to do this, and it's three, uh, glitch in the engine. Okay, inward odyssey stuff is on page 92. Glitch in the engine. You're in the mess hall in the middle of supper when the Argo suddenly shudders and the loss of speed is instantly felt. You quickly make your way to the aliophile engine room where the giant spheres that make the Argo move spin in perpetual motion. Many of those spheres are near motionless now. Others spin far faster than normal, dangerously fast. There's been a malfunction, Alcabides reports, wiping sweat from his tired brow. The spheres are compensating for the loss of power. I don't know if the Argo can take any more of this. What can we do? Look for the breach. If you have five or more hull, lose a hull. So this is not a good one. Not a good one. We have three hull. 
so that's not going to impact us. Thank goodness. After a while, you find the problem. One of the ambrosia pumps has been damaged. The ambrosia tank's wall is stained black and the thick liquid overflowing, seeping out through microscopic cracks. You feel such bottomless want emanating from the dark mass that you take a few steps back. The air fills with the screech of metal and the bronze wall of the tank crumples like dried skin. You realize it's going to blow, but it's too late to run, too late to warn anyone. You brace for the worst and hear the deafening sound of 12 pumps dumping the tank's contents in perfect synchronicity at a rate you previously thought impossible. The pipe should rupture, but they don't. The sabotaged pump caused a reverse flow to the distribution tank. The voice is vaguely fem feminine. It was about to go uh, metastasis? It was about to go metastasios. Silly Argonauts. The woman who crawls from beneath the cluster of pipes wears revealing clothes and a strange headdress. Her eyes, those are not the eyes of a mortal. I'm what you would call a nymph, she proclaims, seeing your confusion, and I just saved all your lives. You're welcome. Build us a place worthy of the gods laid low, she adds, eyeing the engine room. She runs a finger along one of the pipes and then inspects it for grease. Not of worship, but of allegiance. If you do so, we might just pay you more visits. You do want us to visit, don't you? As she says that, she winks and disappears among the machinery. The old priest knows the nymphs. They are a group of powerful entities that sprang into being after the old gods of Olympus had died. Their motivations are unknown and their methods are inscrutable, he explains. And they like to play with the fates of mortals, just like their predecessors. But they may be bargained with. Work on the nymph Editon begins immediately. But one thing clouds this promise of a strange new alliance. She said sabotaged. Whew. Gain the strange alliance technology card. Secret deck one, card two. Uh, okay. Secret deck one, card two. What size is secret deck one? It is a technology card, so is it uh, poker sized? I think there's a sheet that actually says that stuff. Oh man, there is so much stuff in this game. Or is it a tarot size? It's tarot. Secret deck one, card two. Strange Alliance. The Olympians are dead, their mount raised and their cults scattered. Howbeit nature abhors a vacuum. We need to have three plus Argo Fate, which we just got. Nymph Adaton. The nymphs are completely alien to us. Their motives unknown and unscrupulous, yet they may be bargained with. Mythic allies. Permanent. You can summon nymphs. See rulebook. Summon limit one. Uh, you can gain a doom and lose two priests to regain a spent summon charge, or you can gain two Argo Fate and two doom to regain a spent summon charge. Okay. I honestly don't remember reading about nymphs, so I will have to read up on nymphs. Is that a in battle thing? I'll look at it in just a second, but we're not done with what this says. One summoning charge and the engine nymph summoning card, secret deck three, card 27. You can now summon nymphs into battle or during your voyage. Okay, I need to find the Engine Nymph Summoning card. You know what, I'm gonna look for this card and read these rules since it says you can do it during the voyage phase, uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I do remember reading that now, and I remember when I read it, I was like, uh, well, it's gonna be a lot of information on cards when we get the cards, so. Um, so this was the thing that gave us the summoning ability. Summon limit is one. The rule book says to like note the limit and that adventure set or that uh, inward odyssey thing said to said that we gain a summoning charge 
And we also got this engine nymph. And the rules say like, you mark the summon limit, um, like up there. And when I use my charge, I guess I mark off a box. And then you write the name of the nymph next to it. Um, so I guess I'm supposed to know that I have a summoning charge. It doesn't really have anywhere to mark down that you get where you have how many summoning charges you have. But this is our nymph. If you have three or less hull, uh, we basically can spend a charge to summon the engine nymph to move two spaces. Uh, we wouldn't resolve anything on the, the card we move over. Um, so we could use that, I guess, to move over a doom tile. That would be good. That would be nice. But then the adversary moves. If you move over an unexplored thing, then you're supposed to put the engine nymph token on it uh, to treat it as it being unexplored. Um, so that's our engine nymph. I think that's the end of the expedition step, finally, because the progress was, or we got that from our adventure, that's right. So there's no timeline battle, but we get to advancement, and we do have a structural advancement on our timeline, and I think I am going to go with, there's one, oh, should I get, uh, so you got a couple different options here. I've got Titan Hunting, which could give me more Titans. The one that I can get rid of Maze Touched. Oh no, it's the battle one that has the Argo ability, I think. Yes, it's a battle thing. Okay, so structurally, do we want Titan hunting or to get rid of Maze Touch? I don't think there's a bad thing about Maze Touch with fighting the Hecaton, which is what I want to fight next. So we're going to get Titan hunting to give us a chance at uh, getting more Titans. It leads, uh, let's read it. There's only a handful of Titans on board the Argo. If we were meant to survive, we need to procure more. Only philosophers are able to subdue wild titans and bring them to the Argo, but they refuse to share their secrets. We do have to gain an Argo fate if we want to do that. We do get to add a new exploration card to the exploration deck also. So let's get Titan Rearing into our projects. Titan Rearing. Let you see the backside here. So we need the Untamed Titan Exploration Card. Just a straight up gain of Titan. Let's go on in our exploration deck. Did I remember to do the exploration phase? I think so. I must have because the stupid guy is right next to us. So that'll get shuffled in there. And this goes to our technologies. And I'm still not crafting. Story. We go to here on the story step. Six progress tokens. Here's our picture. Nice art. 
little bit of green messing with the green screen in there. Minos is a hard man to find. The scraps of information you do manage to uncover inevitably lead to a dead end. A missing fisherman, a burned down temple, a murdered philosopher. It doesn't help that the Minoans are not as forthcoming as you would like. It seems the king held the island in too tight a grip and there are many who would prefer him to be remain missing. A lesser crew would give up on this fruitless search, but not you. Even the absence of clues is itself a clue. Someone has been covering their tracks. There's talk of foreigners supposedly looking for the same prize you're after. Not far from your current position, atop a mount on an artificial island, stands an unfinished Cretan, wonder known to some as the City of the Bull. It's an, unknown, it's an unfinished Cretan wonder known to some as the City of the Bull. Construction halted when the great morning began, yet now there are rumors of foreign ships coming and going under the cover of night. It might be prudent to pay a visit. Rules. Reach the City of the Bull. Place the City of the Bull marker on the closest unoccupied city symbol. We don't have one of those because I think uh, Gnosis is supposed to be treated as occupied. Pretty sure that's in the beginning of the storybook here for the Cycle 1 rules. Uh, when an effect instructs you to place an unoccupied, place it on us with no tokens. Do not place any tokens on Gnosis. Treat as occupied for this purpose. And this is our only other city. It's occupied. So if there are no unoccupied symbols on the map, place the marker on this card instead. Then when you reveal a map tile with that symbol, immediately place City of the Bull marker on that. Okay, so we need to find the City of the Bull marker. Baggy O tokens. That is it. So we'll go on here until we find a city. You cannot use negotiation abilities on a, uh, on a city covered by the City of the Bull Marker. Finding the city. If the Argo is on the map tile with the City of the Bull Marker, during the story step, C0002. Some story cards do not require you to collect progress. Any progress token is placed on them is effectively wasted. You may, however, still collect progress on Inward Odyssey. Okay, so now we're just trying to find a city, and I guess if, when we find it, this thing will move there and we will fulfill this condition. We don't have any unoccupied ones, right? That one's occupied by that thing. There's nothing on here. Yeah. I think that's it for the story step. No doom step and end. Wow, that was a long day. So let's move, let's go down the coast. 59. Oh, my stuff's starting to angle creep sideways. 59. Doom. And nothing else. Secret numbers. Nope. We mark the timeline. So we're going to have a Battle gear advancement today. Okay. Exploration step, doom. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's three doom out of six needed. There's nothing really else on there. Timeline battles, and, oh, we gotta do the exploration. Oh, I mean, I also have to move. And we have to raise my blood pressure. 
with the exploration draw. To Trireme, Trireme resources is our first stack and it's done. And our next one is, oh, that's our Titan. And this continues. Okay, sweet. So what does that take us to? Eight or seven? Takes us to seven. We continue this stack. It's another Titan. Oh, we start with this one in the deck. That's not even the new one that we got. Uh, denounced, friendly plus no, friendly plus no. Well, what do you know? Two Titans. And it's a continuation on the second stack. And a monument. Okay. So we've got two full teams of Titans now. We're at eight out of 10. And two triremes. Could really use the trading vessel. And 10 monuments. None of these are set aside. There, 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 and there. Okay, so back to our order of play. There's no adventure symbols. There's no timeline battle. Now we're going to craft something. I think I want the forced Kratos reaction. I mean, advanced. Weapons seems cool as well. We're still on level one. We're still on level one. And I think I like the idea of... Nope, that's not the right one. Crisis protocol? Crisis protocol. That's the right one. It's an Argo ability. We get two charges, choose a Titan, and we can reduce danger by two. Fallen priests have uncovered a surprising Gaia connection. Through the Truskillian Junction, we may be able to stimulate some form of spontaneous healing. A new philosophical protocol allows us to tap into the lingering life force of Gaia and redirect it to and from a Titan. Leads to Labyrinthoros sighting. Babby sighting. We might have that in there already. We do. So we have this now, and I'm going to sleeve this because it'll be having tokens and stuff on it. Put it over here with Aerial Barrage because we can have two abilities in the battle. So we'll have Aerial Barrage and Crisis Protocol. Now, I say we wait one more day. We've got day 12, and then day 13 is the timeline battle. I want to do our exploration phase from day 12 to see what other resources we get before we craft any more gear. There's no story events, no doom or anything to do. So let's go. We're going to go to day 12. And we'll just keep going down, 64, 64, 64 has, okay, a lot. It's going to happen on 64. We've got progress. That's going to go on our Inward Odyssey card. We've got a city, which is going to become the city of the bull. Well, look, there's a bull thing. And we've got another adventure. And so we have to immediately move this to here. 
So we can't do any of the negotiation stuff. Not using negotiation abilities on that city. So in the story step, we're going to read 0002. I'm just going to put that on the timeline. 0002 today. Uh, we're going to get a progress to put on our Inward Odyssey because putting them on this story card, putting them here does nothing. So we'll put it up here. Progressing on our Odyssey advancement nicely. And then that was our exploration symbols. Yeah, there's no Titan symbol on here. Okay. We get a lot of doom and then progress, except for up here we got doom, doom. Oh yeah, doom and then progress. Anyway, okay. Uh, expedition. We go to the adventure table. Get my helpful little chart out here. We still are on story one. I rolled a 10. That's man of purpose. Man of purpose. So we would be doing alpha on man of purpose. Does that thing mean that it's on page 51? That chart could be extra helpful. It is, man of purpose. Alpha is a crime one. We've got all kinds of crime Nemos cards. Blood on your hands is crime. So Penelope is gonna get one. Imprisonment is crime. So that's the second one on imprisonment here. And that's it for crime. So two, it's better than zero. Following rumors about a hidden cache of Theseus, you arrive at a small fishing village, again? Or what was one at some point, again? Now the piers stand tall and naked, its pilings bared like corroding teeth. The boats sink in sticky mud. There was water here once. Further from the dried up shore, short stubby stumps pierced the ground. The fabled underwater forests of Crete, or what remains of them. There are a few villagers are hunting crabs and harvesting the toughest stone bark. One of the women notices you. She comes closer, examining you carefully and noting your exotic appearance and equipment and leads you to the headman of the village. We are twice cursed outsiders, says the headman, before you have a chance to explain your mission. First came the Hornsworn. When they left for their war against Minos' tyranny, they were heroes. They return thieves and murderers who prey on the weak. Each month they descend from Theseus' keep to collect a share of our catch. Payment for their protection. But the sea has receded and there's no more catch. Soon we will all starve. Help us and we will share with you anything we have. Petra, he motions to the woman who introduced you, can guide you. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. Choose a party leader, then see 001. I'm going to go with Sersigard. Petra guides you along the desiccated shore. Here and there, small maze fragments protrude from the sand like discarded shells. When I was a little girl, this place was peaceful, muses Petra, though men came for tribute just the same. My father always got sad when we saw Minos' sails. Well, she adds quietly, except for once. What happened that time? She gives you a strange look. The sea was festooned with flowers. Beautiful. Prince Androgeos had died at Athens. The king mourned. The island, not so much. Nobody knew it would come to the Minotaur. 
that Minos would lose it. You reach a cliff where steps have been carved into the very stone. If not for Theseus, we would have all ended up in Minotaur's belly. You carefully climb the hand-cut steps, taking care not to slip on the damp stone. When you're about two-thirds of the way up, a lone guard in a tattered robe bars your path. Turn back, outlanders. This is Theseus's domain. That is why we have come. The guard looks uneasy, but seeing your numbers, decides not to push his luck. At the top of the stairs, a natural fissure in the cliff serves as the entrance to the Horn Sworn's hold. The island is dark and cramped. This must have been an excellent defensive position during the war. The walls are cracked, however, and here and there, the ceiling has caved in. Theseus' hideout might have outlasted Minos, but it will not outlast time. As you pass through the tight corridors, more and more warriors join your file. They wear ragged, clammy cloaks and helms with broken horns, but in the fleeting light of the torch, you notice flashes of polished bronze plates underneath. People flock to Theseus, whispers Petra. We've noticed. It wasn't just for show, you know. Theseus had a way with words, but he walked the walk. He was a man of purpose. He wanted to make the world a better place. Too bad his followers don't seem to follow his example. You reach a spacious cavern converted into a dormitory and warehouse. There are stacks of crates and sealed amphoras wrapped in cloth, ready for shipping. Outsiders. The deep voice instantly makes you feel unwelcome. Who invited you? The speaker, a fat, haggard man sitting on an improvised throne covered in cowhides, grimaces at your sight. We come like the tide, answers one of you softly. The shores dried up. Petra's people cannot carry your burden anymore. Her people are under my protection, he gestures to Petra. If you interfere, many will suffer. If the Minoan guide is with you, see 002, then choose. So 002, the horn sworn. Crete was torn apart for this. Leave them be, says the princess cautiously. I believe there is a grander prize here, one you would surely covet. I'll pay these people off so we may look for it. Choose. Agree to the, princess, agree to the princess's proposal. Will give us horn sworn diplomacy minus two, Minoan diplomacy minus one, or deal with the horn sworn yourself. C0010. So I have to remember to go back. This is going to be. Because this thing says C002, then choose. But uh, here we're at 002, so she's asking, what's our horn sworn diplomacy? That's fine, we'll go down to unfriendly with them. We will leave it to her. Okay, so that's minus two, and then we get. Minoan Diplomacy plus one, so that takes us to plus two. Still inside neutral. Then C0010, 0010. The princess has a way with words, and these horns sworn lap them up hungrily. Soon you're on your way to the lower levels of the keep. Will they leave my village alone? asks Petra. Certainly. Achilles smiles wryly. They know this coast is doomed. In their hearts, they wanted to leave. They just needed a little push. Petra's face remains dour. All she heard was doomed. In a murky cavern recently uncovered by the receding sea level, the remains of some giant ancient stonework have stood the test of time. Among the broken pillars, you find a translucent amphora made of an unknown material. Inside is a viscous fluid with properties described by your philosophers as paracasual. So there's a little glyph thing here. So spoiler alert, and that doesn't help at all. A little bit. There's a little glyph thing here that has one thing that shows that that's a nine. This other thing that there's two of, I think is the one from our card. Yeah. So there's two of these at the end of it. But this is revealing to us that that new thing is a nine.
And I think if we guess wrong, do we gain a doom or something? If the paragraph doesn't show the symbol, you must have made a mistake in your decoding. Don't read it. That You get an Argo fate if you guess wrong. I don't think I want to guess yet, but I'm going to make a note. In our notes that a big box, little dot, little dot, little dot is a nine. Um, gain one Sisyphus tier and a doom. Okay. Thanks for that. That's doom number four. But we got a Sisyphus tier, so we could redo a second battle if we get totally hosed in a battle. So now I do, I wonder if we're supposed to go back. Then choose, you don't like his tone. Hmm. I don't know if I'm supposed to Because it didn't say to return to the voyage phase. It it does say if the Minoan Guide is with you, C0002, then choose. So I think I have to choose. You don't like his tone. These horns sworn are preying on nearby villages. You cannot do anything about the sea drying up, but you can do something about bullies. You confront the Hornsworn and drive them off. See, but when I was looking at these options for 002, it says, agree to the princess's proposal or deal with the Hornsworn yourself. Return to 001. So maybe I don't go back because that one said to return to 001 and she already dealt with them. Oh, duh, I'm an idiot. It says C0011, if I would read. Uh, you return to the settlement to share the good news. The villagers celebrate their newfound freedom with a humble feast. Petra, for her part, offers her continued services as a guide, at least until you stay on the Cretan shore. You know, says Petra, gazing up at the bright stars of the night sky, you remind me much of Theseus. He also was reluctant at first. This wasn't his fight either. But on a night not unlike this one, he met his reason. Er Ariadne? Ariadne? Boy, the names in this, I swear. I swear. Least likely Argonaut gains a night to remember Nemos card. This one doesn't say to go to anything else after that. So I think we're just done. I think we're just done. Because she dealt with them for us, right? A night to remember. A night to remember. A night to remember. A Nemos card to remember. A night to remember. So least likely there's only two that have one. And we can only have two of these each. So we will randomize who gets this. Four is going to be Cersei Guard, our party leader. She's going to get a Courage and a Fury. Courage and a Fury. Unexhaust an armor card? Or, or unexhaust a gear card is the level one. Is the level one thing. Another Titan may exhaust a card. Okay. Oh, we gotta read the story. 
Warm air and cold wine and fabulous colors in the night sky. A love realized or an age attained. A joyous celebration. It's the other side. What was the other one that we got? Someone waiting? Yeah. You can't quite put a finger on it, but there's a soft pull on your soul strings each time you look to the north. Each time you look to the north. That's Telebacchus. That was just our adventure, right? Just our adventure. A lot of stuff going on to keep track of. And I'm pretty sure we're done. If it doesn't say, I guess you just go back to the voyage phase, right? So that's expedition, encounter. Uh, on day 12, there's no, there's no timeline battle. That's tomorrow. That's day 13. And then advancement, because we're not in the story step yet, so we're not dealing with this. Okay, so now here's the big, here's the big decisions. We didn't get to trade, which is a bummer. I don't think I need another ranged weapon. We only got one armament. We've got a ton of monuments, a ton of triremes and raw ambrosia. So let's look at, um, I did not get out the new stuff that we can make. I think we will be making a couple of these reflex move items. These lifeguard things. Seven triremes and four raw ambrosia. For a fate we can move, that might stop like a knockdown or something. That's the exploration deck. Is there anything else? Any other weapons or armor? I don't have enough armaments to do a shipwreck or shield. Do I want another boat mace? Maybe not. And I don't have enough armament to make any of this stuff. I could make. Do I have a calcified knuckle bone? I do. So we could make a siren shield, but I think these um, I think these lifeguards are probably the way to go. We have so many monuments. I could just hold on to them to trade. Or do I make another boat mace? I mean, the question with the boat mace is just, what do, what do you want to give up? We did get that sweet gear at the end last time too, though. I'm just going to make this support stuff. Not going to hem and haw. It seems pretty sweet. We're going to make two of these. That's going to take 14 triremes. I should probably sleeve these things because I'm going through them quite a bit. Uh, so it's seven and four, so it's going to be 14 triremes and eight raw ambrosia. So that takes us to three. And we'll have two triremes left. And that'll get us two of these reflex move things added to our folks oh I put those on the exploration deck I keep thinking that's the gear deck I need to sleeve those that's all potential stuff we can build uh, I'm just gonna give these to a couple people we will 
sort those out when we get into battle. We don't even need to be on people right now. Okay, so I'm done with advancement because there's no other kind of advancement that day. Story. C002, because we are on the city with this. Zero, zero, 002, the absent rule. As the morning mist parts, you witness a view that beggars belief. An island metropolis to rival the fading beauty of Knossos. Among the tall white buildings of marble, temples, agros, and academies, soaring machines of bronze scrape the skies and cast long elliptical shadows on carefully preserved patches of greenery. Yet it all seems unfinished, like the artist or architect got distracted halfway. A tapestry, tapestry, of ivory golden jade, says the old priest absentmindedly, if only a fraction of the wealth spent here went to the people. You recall a labyrinthian sermon you heard not long ago if one of, in one of the Minoan ports, a teaching of the one they call the punished, a prophet of the maze. We surround ourselves with baubles and build towers of dreams in ivory, but there is no escaping the truth that the towers will topple and the baubles are mere decorations on the walls of the maze we are all trapped in. You shiver. Let's hope we find Minos here and in this wild search. The Argo grinds to a halt just off the island. The rest of the way, you'll have to travel in less grand a vessel. If the Minoan guide is with you, C0150. If the old spinner is with you, C0151. So we're going to 150. 150. The princess, your Minoan guide, seems oddly wistful. This was to be Daedalus' last great work, grander than the lighthouse, and a beacon of hope and good, unlike the labyrinth. Shame the war put an end to his efforts. Whatever happened to him? Who? Daedalus? Why, I never really thought about it. He left. Nothing dramatic, mind you. He just blended into the background, and then one day he was gone. Gain an Argo knowledge, then make a... Uh, Minoan Guide Tally Mark. And I'm saying Minoan Guide because I keep butchering her name. So that's four. When we get to, what is it, ten? If there are ten or more, we have to see something. Uh, we gain an Argo Knowledge. Oh, crap, where was I? Oh, yeah, 150. Gain an Argo Knowledge. Make a Tally Mark. Return to 002. Okay. Return to 002. Again, Argo Knowledge takes us to 4. So we have to remember to do that at the end of our step. A Distant Thunder. Okay, so back to 002. We don't have the old spinner. Choose a party leader. I'm just going to stay with Cersei Guard. They'll be going on foot. Each other Argonaut chooses to go on foot or to junction with a Titan and go that way. Select a weapon card two. More Titans means more raw power if it comes to blows, though only Argonauts can engage in diplomacy. Manipulate delicate devices and enter small spaces. Choose carefully, then proceed. Okay, so maybe I should choose a party leader that has a lot of potential Additions, Courage, Cunning, Endurance, Wisdom, Courage, Fury, Will, Wisdom. We're going to go with Telebacchus in case Endurance becomes a thing. I don't know. Courage, Will, and Wisdom. Now we'll go with Otis Zero as our on-foot party leader. And we will put Circeguard and Penelope. We'll put two people into... Argonauts. What weapons do we want to take? Maybe a boat mace? Oh, we're going to, and we'll, oh, obviously, we're going to take our maze mace also. So these two are in Titans, and these two 
are not. Otis zero. He's got three danger already. Now Telebacchus will be our party leader. He's got two fate though. Okay. The city port is a far cry from the rundown docks of Gnosis. There, on closer inspection, it's not all pristine marble and lacquered wood. The pier has weathered through years of neglect, water and wind and weeds biting deep into its foundations. Further into the city, this aura of abandonment persists, joined by another, more bizarre look. The perfect unfinishedness of it all. Buildings cut in half like a fish on a chopping block, showing their innards. Skeletal towers, high but naked. Temples with half-sculpted statues. Olympian muscles, chiseled, almost lifelike, with faces missing, still perfect rectangular blocks of stone. Incomplete pavements bring to mind discarded puzzle pieces. Among all this, bronze machinery looms cold and lifeless, frozen in motion, feeding rocks, laying st stone, cutting wood. Check these in descending order, line by line. If you meet the conditions of a line, see that passage. If labyrinthians, unfriendly or worse. Yes, unfriendly. C0015. Here you start noticing the maze-like graffiti, subtle at first but more visible with each street that takes you closer to the elevated city center. Your scouts tell of an encampment further uphill, men and women clothed in tatters, covered in the maze tattoos of the cult of the labyrinth, but also armored warriors of the bull, with their helms coated black with suit and a maze pattern drawn on them. The labyrinthian ranks are growing, it seems. They have not noticed your arrival yet, so you are left with a choice, fight or sneak around them. If your Argo fate is six or more, you must choose option one. Otherwise, okay, number one. Leaving them be will only postpone the problem. You'll still cross their camp on the way back, and right now you've got the element of surprise on your side. You need to crush them in one fell swoop and be done with it. You confront them. The party leader would gain a rage, and then we would see 0021. Or, you have neither time nor patience for senseless bloodshed. Moreover, none of your previous encounters with the Labyrinthians proved worth the effort or the cost in lives. No, you're here for one reason and one reason alone, King Minos. The sooner you find him, the sooner you can get off this island and possibly Crete altogether. You evade the Labyrinthians. A Labyrinthian diplomacy would go plus one. The leader tests cunning or fury. Twelve plus. He's got plus one to fury. Add plus two. If the old spinner is with you, she's not. Plus two, if you finished the Fated Conundrum Hub. How would we have finished that? No. Subtract two for F2 and H10, and one if at least one of the Argonauts is maze touched. Each Argonaut on foot can gain a fate and or a danger to add plus one. Gain plus two Argo fate to add one. Um, we need a 12 plus. We have plus one. I guess we could gain a fate to re-roll. We could gain a fate and a danger to get plus one, so that would be plus three. So we would need a nine. We could gain a... Uh, we could gain two Argo Fate to add plus one. That would be eight. So eight, nine, ten, we got a 30% chance of doing this. If we succeed, we get to place one progress on the next story card, and we would go to 0034. If we fail, we gain a Doom, and we see 0021. It's each Argo on Fate. Or on foot, I mean. Oh, wait. So we could get plus four, because we got two people on foot. Plus four from that. Yeah, we're going to do it. Man, this is setting us up probably poorly for the next battle, though. So each Argo on foot. 
Do we have F2 or H10 filled in? No, we've only got stuff in row A. Telebacus is on foot. He's going to get plus, and we're starting with four danger, but we have that thing that can lower our danger now. So that's plus four. I will take two Argo Fate. Takes us to four. Because we're about to have a timeline battle where we can get two off of that. So, uh, so we're at plus five. And we do not have the spin stress. We need to do labyrinthian diplomacy plus one. We're at plus five. Telebacus has a cunning, so that's going to be plus six. Does anybody have good fury? Should someone else have been the leader? No. And nobody has double cunning either, so. All right, so let's roll. Oh, and Otis, oh, I should have had it be Otis zero. I should have left it with him because he gets a reroll without getting fate. Okay, so we're going to take the fate to reroll. This fate dial and this rage dial, there's one little spot where they like to move each other. Oh no, we failed. Bummer. All that and we failed. Gain of doom. And I only think he, oh, we can only reroll once anyways, so. Okay, that's five doom. And now we have to go to 21. Deep down he knew it would come to this. Beyond the veil of promises and goodwill, every cult hides an ugly truth. This was true during the times of the Olympians and is true now. And this cult wears its truth on its sleeve. You will not let this rot fester and spread. You've seen enough evil done by those who preach their God's will. Each Argonaut on foot makes a fury or endurance test six plus. Each Titan makes an attack 5+, plus, then a power roll. Each point of power counts as one success. If the old spinner is with you, you may add one success. So each Nargonaut on foot makes a Fury or Endurance test 6+. Plus. Well, Telebacus has Endurance 3. He's got a lot of Endurance. There's an eight. Where were you a couple of minutes ago? So Telebacus is fine. Otis zero. Just gonna have to go straight up. He got a three. He's gonna re-roll that test. Four is not gonna get it done. Oh wait, I need to keep track of successes. So Telebacus had a success. So that's one. Uh, fail. You are wounded during the battle. Gain the maze to touch affliction. Okay. So Otis Zero is now maze touched. And now, Titan makes an attack at five plus, then a power roll, okay? So, Circe Guard has the boat mace. It's a plus two. So that's a success. She gets two plus one for being awesome. And I think it says each wound 
where are we? Uh, each point of power counts as one success. So that's one, two points of power, so we're up to three. Okay, our other Titan is, has, Penelope has the Maze Mace. She got a 10. She gets her die for being awesome, and with the Maze Mace is two black power dice. Is two more, so that takes us to five. Okay. What would have been the top? Six would have been the top. Uh, four to five. The primal ferocity of the titan strikes fear in even the stoutest labyrinthian hearts. You break through the cultist horde, collapsing whole buildings behind you to cut off their pursuit. You need to find Minos and put an end to this madness. Each Argonaut gains one rage. Labyrinthian Diplomacy minus one. C0040. One rage. One rage. One rage. One rage. Labyrinthian diplomacy minus one. Right back to negative two. Then we go to zero. Four, zero. You make it all the way to the top of the sloping hill the city was built on. Here the buildings are mere skeletons of wood and bronze, and even the ground itself seems unfinished. Dotted with giant holes, revealing the truth of the artificial island that it is hollow. Well, not quite. Down below, the labyrinth creeps toward the surface like some kind of parasitic plant. You can almost see how it morphs and builds upon itself. A remarkable weapon, right? Says a strange man stepping out of the shadows near you. He's bloodied and limping. You don't know how he could have gotten so close without you noticing, especially in his condition. By the looks of your faces, you don't share the Ecclesius's assessment. You glare at him, and that gives him pause. I am Marcos of the Simici, he says. I am a friend. I come at the behest of the one you seek. Is that so? Yes, he insists angrily. Minos. His words are drowned in a thunderous roar, almost like a, a threatening of despair. Shadows on the walls bend and morph into angular shapes and geometric patterns. The ground begins to shape. The ground begins to shake. Mark J7. Go to... Timinos battle on page 114. Note special aftermath 001. If labyrinthians at war escalate one, Argonauts on foot gain plus one danger as they double back to junction with their titans. Oh boy. Okay, so plus one danger. Man, Otis Zero is at five danger already. And we, okay, Mark J7. And we have to go to a Timinos battle on page 114. Note special aftermath 001. But especially I'm going to check the paragraph. If you haven't, if you noted a special aftermath number, if you haven't, see it now. Is there special aftermaths? Where are the, is that in a different spot of the book? Special aftermaths are a different spot in the book. Okay, so we're going to have to do this battle now. Uh, I'm glad I crafted stuff. All right, so I guess that'll probably be the best place to end the video. Uh, check the story paragraph that led you to this battle. Like, you have to remember that? I don't remember. I'm already lost. <laughs> <laughs>
You gotta like note, you gotta write down everything. Mark J7, we did that. Do that battle. We're not at war. So we have special aftermath. Okay, so that's a lot. So where are we actually even in our turn? We are doing this. And we still have this to do. The Inward Odyssey at the end of this step. So did I write that on the timeline? Um, I, I didn't. So I will note that because I will forget. We have to do... Uh, Inward Odyssey number four. Probably after this battle. And then we'll have a timeline battle. So we'll do a battle in the next video. A little bit of story and probably a battle in the video right after that. But it looks like we're going to be fighting the big bad uh, triangle looking pyramid thing. All right, a lot going on. I hope I got everything. Uh, the good news is that we'll probably be resetting our dials and stuff, so when we go to fight Hecaton, we should be uh, back to zeros on the dials. The bad news is we've got five Doom over here, so we probably do not want to lose the battle because that'll add another Doom. So, pretty long one, uh, a, lot of, a lot of reading, a lot of story and stuff, but I hope you enjoyed this. If there's anything I missed, please leave it in the comments below. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Um, and I hope you're enjoying everything I put up on the channel, and I will see you in the next one for a battle.